Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Perkins, a board certified OBGYN. Thanks for joining my channel today. I think you have a question today about bacterial vaginosis. Yes, this is the topic of today's video, how to get rid of BV without antibiotics. And I'm so excited to dive into the topic today because it is one that is a very common, a very common infection. And so these questions arise because we want treatment, we want assistance, and I'm here to help you with that. So in today's video, we will be addressing bacterial vaginosis, whether or not this is an STD, how to know exactly if you're having bacterial vaginosis. And while we're at it, we'll talk about that compared to a yeast infection. And we'll talk about the treatment options for bacterial vaginosis, including things that you can do right in your home that will help with this infection. Stay with me. Come on in. <music> Bacterial vaginosis is a very, very common infection that really affects up to 50% of females, regardless of where you are around the world, how old you are, and what your activities are like. This infection is caused by bacteria that normally lives in your vagina as is. That bacteria overgrows because of a lot of different reasons, which some of which I've discussed right here in this video. So if you're interested, you can go ahead and check that out after watching this one. But with this infection, you can have symptoms or you can be without symptoms. So it makes it kind of a little bit challenging with determining what exactly is happening in your space. But if this has been confirmed and you know that you have this infection, know that there are options outside of that which is prescribed to you for treatment that will help you to cure this infection. So before we go into that, I really want you to know that bacterial vaginosis or BV is not a sexually transmitted infection. Now, it's also important to know that it can be passed on from person to person, but it's not categorized as an STD because you can also have this infection outside of sexual activity. In general, things like chlamydia or gonorrhea can be passed on specifically just through sex, but bacterial vaginosis can be an infection in people who are not sexually active, including children, adolescents, and others, and so it's important to make that note. Most people with bacterial vaginosis have absolutely no symptoms. There is a small subset of people who may notice a change in their discharge that becomes a little bit more gray, thin, or even milky, and that might be the only subtle sign that there is an infection in the vagina. Others may have a fishy odor and smell, especially in the midst of sexual activity, that might be a hint that there is an infection in the background that needs to be treated. I always recommend that you get tested by your provider, whether that's a midwife, a nurse practitioner, or a physician, getting a sample of your discharge and sending it off to the lab can really give us much information about the flora in your vaginal space, what it looks like and what it comprises of. And of course, if there's an infection being caused by overgrowth of these bacteria or fungus that normally lives in your vagina. There are several different treatment options for BV. And so I first want to make note of the most effective and that which have been shown in research as actually really, really working. And so this is what we refer to as evidence-based medicine. And so while research has been done to look at so many different treatment options, these are the top two that has been proven. And of course it comes with prescriptions. And so those options are metronidazole and clindamycin. These two antibiotics are very specific to the changes and overgrowth that can happen with these bacteria in the vagina. And so while they won't necessarily wipe out all the bacteria that causes this, because you really need some in the vagina to just remain there, it will take care of your infection quite effectively. They come in multiple different forms. So for instance, metronidazole comes in the form of a gel that you can place in the vagina 
at night for several nights, usually five nights in a row, and this helps to clear your infection completely versus taking a pill and you'll do that treatment several days in a row, usually up to seven to clear your infection. And it's completely acceptable to use any form of treatment. I usually explain to my patients that choosing a form of treatment is really based on your preference. And so some people are uncomfortable placing things in the vagina, placing things in the vagina for multiple days in a row, as well as some of the discharge that comes from using the gel form in the vagina but it works just as well as taking the pill. I know other people are just not very comfortable with taking pills. They just don't like to swallow them. It's just very tedious and harder for them to stay on track with taking their dosages as they should. And so that person may opt to go for the vaginal treatment versus by pill or by mouth. And so it doesn't really matter. They're both very effective choose an option that works best for you. An alternative to metronidazole is clindamycin. And in the research world, we have studied clindamycin very, very well. And so we've seen that as far as efficacy, both are quite equal with no significant difference. One thing that I would mention that research has recently started to show that clindamycin can sometimes create a resistance in the bacteria that causes BV over time and especially immediately after treatment. So what does that look like? Well, any bacteria that becomes resistant is no longer going to be destroyed by antibiotics. And so follow me here. You get treated with clindamycin, you have a recurrence of this BV and you want treatment again. If you were to try to use clindamycin again to treat this infection, it will be ineffective. It will not work. You will continue to have that infection. And so we find that with clindamycin, the likelihood of having bacteria that is resistant to its use is much higher than metronidazole. And so because of that, the treatment of choice for me and for my patients would be to go the route of metronidazole unless there's another reason not to but it works great and there's no resistance that we can see with that. Now, both of these treatments are the best options for treating bacterial vaginosis, but we're here to talk about other alternatives and so let's dive into it. The number one alternative that I would recommend for you is using boric acid. Boric acid is a supplement, if you will, that can be found over the counter. You can get this at the pharmacy, you can get this online, and essentially this creates a very acidic state in the vagina. And I'll tell you why that is very helpful in preventing bacterial vaginosis and treating it as well. The vagina is a space that has lots of bacteria, lots of fungus living there, all protecting the vagina from the rest of the world. And we want this to remain in a healthy state. What helps with that is having an acidic environment for them to live and thrive in. Whenever the acidity decreases, which means that the space becomes more basic, if you think of the pH scale, any bacteria and fungus that lives in the vagina become disrupted to a degree that they may overgrow in trying to create balance in that acidic state again. And so your body goes into a process of creating more of the bacteria that it needs in hopes of creating the acidic state that your vagina needs. And so because of that, we end up getting infections. And so we wanna help the body out by giving more acid in the form of boric acid so that your body doesn't have to fight to try to do that in the process of creating another infection. And so boric acid is amazing with keeping the vagina very acidic, which is exactly what you want. Now, we have studied bacterial vaginosis for decades and we've definitely seen a link between having less acid in the vagina and more infections versus having more acid. So trying the boric acid is an excellent way to combat the infection that could be present, as well as preventing future bacterial vaginosis infections as well. If you are thinking about using these, always, always consult your provider to discuss your symptoms, 
your thoughts, and things that you would like to try at home to treat bacterial vaginosis. Another alternative is garlic. Sounds weird, I know. But garlic has actually been studied in the research community a lot to the point that we have found that garlic can treat bacterial vaginosis almost as great as metronidazole, clindamycin, and other antibiotics. And so you might be thinking, well, wait, Dr. P, am I supposed to put garlic in my vagina? What are you trying to say to me today? I get it. I understand. And so my answer to that thought in your mind is kind of yes and no. There are supplements that are garlic supplements that you can like capsules that you can place in the vagina that will do it so you don't have to think about or worry about putting a clove of garlic in your vagina and, and getting stuck. So we're not going down that pathway, but that is an alternative that can be used. Um, and also incorporating a lot of garlic in your foods and cooking and, and the meals that you're having. And so if you're me, I don't like the smell of garlic on my breath. It's just not something that I enjoy and even in the form of taking the capsules and supplements by mouth it's just not my preferred way of doing anything and so for me it doesn't it's not my preferred option but research has shown that garlic helps to treat bacterial vaginosis just as well as antibiotics and without the additional side effects lastly I recommend having probiotics. Probiotics are very important for helping to create and balance the amount of good bacteria that we have living in specific areas of our bodies, in particular your gut, your stomach, intestines, everything involved with that, as well as the vagina. What happens here is that when you take the probiotics, these are healthy alternatives to cultures and bacteria that you're adding to your internal system. And when you support your internal system with more good bacteria, you help your system to function better and decrease the likelihood of other infections. With that, if you incorporate more of the probiotics, you can target the gut and you can target the vaginal space as well. It is important that when you purchase probiotics that you search for bottles or brands that specifically incorporate vaginal health. Whenever you see that note on their bottle, so you know that it incorporates the cultures and bacteria that is specific to the vagina so that you can decrease the likelihood of having an infection such as BV as well as a yeast infection. But also if you are with that infection, it helps to decrease the likelihood of that infection continuing and actually increases the likelihood of you having a cure naturally internally. So these are my top three alternatives that I would recommend for you if you have a bacterial vaginosis infection and you'd like to treat it without antibiotics. But as I mentioned earlier in this video, antibiotics are the most effective. And so if you want to go ahead and completely know that you're cured effectively, that's an alternative for you. But if for some reason you're not able to get to the doctors right away and you'd like to try some of these other things at home, these work as well. If your symptoms persist, always follow through with going to the doctors because some of these symptoms can be present with no infection as well as other infections. So explore that further with your doctors. Thank you for being here today. I'm Dr. Perkins, a board certified OBGYN. If you'd like to explore more of these topics, um, I have plenty of videos, including this one right here, where you can learn more about bacterial vaginosis, treatment options to help prevent getting these infections. So now I have a free gift for you. Right below at the link, you'll be able to get a copy of my free ebook, Hormones Don't Lie. With that ebook, you will learn a ton about your hormones, a ton about your pelvis, your vagina, and how your lifestyle may influence these things and what to do about them. I'm Dr. Perkins. Thank you for being here today, and I hope that you've learned something about bacterial vaginosis. And if so, go ahead and like or subscribe to this video and this page, and I hope to see you again. Take care. Feel free to check out some of these other videos that I have on this exact topic and dive in deeper into symptoms, treatments, and things that you can do to prevent getting bacterial vaginosis.